where have you been? <laughs> okay. Um, I didn't realize this was seven years since your last original body of work. Yeah. For your new EP. Um, okay. Time flies by. It flies so fast. The million dollar question, where have I been? Um, honestly, I think that um, in the beginning of this process, um, of the seven years, you know, I I won't take away from the fact that I was going on tour and I was, you know, doing shows and things like that. Probably the first three to f three years, three to four years. Um, but once that started to kind of die down and shows weren't being booked anymore, I think I was in a place where um, I, I didn't really know what to do next. I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know what space I was in. Um, I wasn't necessarily confident in, you know, maybe my writing or, you know, my performance. I, I was just kind of like in a, a lost kind of space. Um, I wasn't. I wasn't writing music. I don't think. I was kind of just living off of you know past successes, um, and um, I don't know. J J D and B Cogs they weren't really trying to work for real. <laughs> I mean, it was just kind of like I don't know what to do because um in the beginning I got thrown into this. You know, I didn't understand that when you get it, you got to still work to keep it and you know, you need to be creating relationships or you need to have somebody trying to get endorsement deals and you know, like you need to do um, you know, good with your money. You need to know how to manage it and invest it. And I didn't know any of this stuff. So I was just kind of just like in this lost bubble. Um, kinda, I don't, I don't even know. I was just, that's what I call it. Like this lost and confused phase. Um, I started to come out of it a little bit and I recorded this whole EP called Intermission, which I thought was pretty clever. Um, and the music was good, but I think that if I would have put it out, it would not have been a great, the greatest representation of who I was. Um, I'm sure people would have liked it, but it just, it, I don't think it was time to, I needed to be in a better place um, and put better quality music out. So that never came out. Maybe one day I'll put some unreleased tracks on it, um, or tracks from it out. Um, but then I met my current manager, um, Jeremy Horton, and he showed me the true definition of artist development, like authentic artist development from back in the day. And he was on my ass um, for everything. Like, he just, he really just whipped me up into shape, which I, I wish that I had that, you know, earlier on. Um, and he's just, I don't know, he just taught me so much. He had me like in rehearsals. I wasn't dancing before. Now I be in here two step and ah, 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 ah. Like I, I really have become an entertainer. I've become a true performer. Um, vocally, I've advanced beyond, like way beyond. I thought, I, I don't know. I surprise myself sometimes. Um, so I think the last these last few years has been basically artist development i've been grooming and just you know working on my brand and really becoming like a businesswoman and really figuring out what i want this to be where i want it to go like really really just i don't know honing in on who dondria the artist is is jermaine dupree and brian cox still a part of your situation Jermaine Dupri and Brian Michael Cox are still a part of my situation. There's actually a record on my EP produced by Brian Michael Cox. Um, so we still have a great relationship. I don't think that I, I can't completely fault them or, you know, be upset or anything because I know now that I had to be in a situation where I had to do it myself. And I think they respect that. Um, and... It's cool. It's cool. I'm I'm not I'm not upset that they weren't. I don't think I would have appreciated it 
as much if they just gave me records or just handed it to me once again. I had to work for it this time. Was there a point where you quit the music business or you thought about quitting? Um, I don't think there's ever been a point where I wanted to quit, but definitely a place where I just, I just didn't know, I had no idea what direction to go. Um, so with that, I just didn't do anything. Mm. Um, so I, I don't know. I was just, I was just stagnant and I was just okay with being in this comfort level box where, you know, I might, something might pop off, something might not. I, I was definitely in that space. The genre of music you do is R&B, yes? Yes. People would say R&B is dying or is dead mm -hmm. at this point in 2017. Do you think that contributed to your demise within that seven years? Like maybe if R&B was still a cash crop, maybe there wouldn't be no low point. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, I feel like I got discovered and came in the business right on the tail end of when R&B was still loved and in demand and respected and um, desired. And it's like as soon <laughs> as I put my first album out, it just started changing. And, you know, I've always been an R&B head. I've now I have tried to do other kinds of music. I tried to do some club records and I mean, they were cool, but I know my fans knew that it wasn't me. Um, I, I think now I've found this perfect balance where I can give you uh, what you need <laughs> and give you what you want, but still have who I am in it. Um, you know, even with DM, you know, that's probably my most up-tempo record. And it's definitely a dance record. You can play it in the club, but I'm still singing my ass off on it. Um, so I think I found a balance in how to do the two. But that um, fall of the, you know, the love for R&B or the demand for R&B definitely had um, a part in me kind of, you know. Do people still care about R&B? I think people do still care about R&B. Um, actually, me and B. Cox were just having this conversation um, at the radio station, and I feel like the few people that are still you know, doing it and just die hard doing it. Like, you know, we'll say like the Jasmine Sullivans, the Tamars, um, the Brandies. I, I feel like, you know, we we love them and we, we're still gonna buy a ticket to their show. You know what I mean? Like, we still want it. Even the rap songs, they're um, sampling, you know, R&B. And even the R&B is sampling R&B. So I know that there's, a desire for it. I just think that, you know, it's kind of one of those things where somebody has to be the brave one that doesn't care what anybody else thinks, doesn't care that people are saying R&B is dead, and just, just go for it. Like, and um, I'm going for it. R&B stands for rhythm and blues, but if you listen to today's music, it's almost like rap and blues. Mm -hmm because artists, like rappers that used to have an R&B artist as a feature, they sing it themselves. Whether it's good singing or bad singer, mm -hmm. or where they call it singing or not, they do it themselves. Mm -hmm. And now you have R&B singers like a Chris Brown who would have a rap feature. He's rapping on his own, where a rap feature would be on his own songs. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's almost like rap and B, if you think about it. Yeah. Um. And like a, 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 you know, like a, a Bryson Tiller, you know, it's not true R and B. It's like, yeah, it's not rapping, but it's 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 you know, it's got that feel, a rap feel to a, uh, yeah, to you know. I I don't necessarily knock um, the ones that are you know taking this lane and going full speed ahead with it. I like 
uh, Bryson Tiller's music. I like hers music. Um, I, I think that everybody does have their lane. But I also think that as a listener, as a consumer, as an audience member, like we can tell like the real from the fake. And so we could tell the artists that are just doing it because it's a trend and the artists that it's really, it's really what they do. Um, and the same thing with rap. You know, Drake came out and started singing and everybody just was like, okay, we all gonna sing, you know, but we, we like it from Drake because he kind of started that wave um, in this time. So um, I don't knock it. I just hate that everybody feels like whatever the trend is, we got to do it like to to be something. Because I feel like, you know, we all have our own gifts. We all have our own talents. We all have our own lanes. And right now, everybody's in this one lane and the other lanes are empty. And that's why it seems like, you know, it's not wanted. Have you tried to rap? Well, I, okay, <laughs> I got bars, first of all. Don't get <laughs> I got some bars. I used to, like, this is just a funny fact. Even, like, in middle school, like, sixth grade, we used to always be in the cafeteria with our little pencils on the table. And I would be rapping now. I like to rap. And then I did the Monica challenge, the Sogon challenge. Killed it. Y'all make sure y'all go on That YouTube. kind of brought R&B back for a second. <laughs> for a second, yeah. Um, so, I look, I like I like to rap. You know, I got bars. I might I might come out with a record. Y'all just wait. Y'all just wait. So, what do you, th what do you see in your forecast of the, the state of R&B? Obviously, it's in kind of like a rap and blues type of feel right now. Mm -hmm. Do you think it'll ever get back on track? Like, just, I mean, what are you thinking right now? Is it in a lost space? Is it in a I don't know what's going to happen next space? Or, um, I mean, I know p you can't predict the future, but what are you feeling? What's in your gut? What's your intuition say? In my gut, I honestly and truly and wholeheartedly believe that this will not always be how it is right now. I, I really do believe that R&B is going to make the comeback. Um, to say who's going to be the one to make it cool again, I don't know. Um, but I do think so. Everything happens in cycles, fashion, music, um, even, I mean, movies. Like, everything has their cycle when they come back around to something. So um, I am a believer that R&B will come back. 